to learn to play. My name is Julie and for those of you that are new here, welcome. Today is a Q&A with all Child Care Center questions being answered. Now since I restarted my YouTube channel a couple of months ago, I have had a lot of DMs, a lot of questions as far as how do I pay my employees, what benefits do I offer, what state programs do I go through. So we have a lot to talk about and I'm going to be totally upfront and honest with what it's like and how much does it cost and <laughs> all the ups and downs of owning a center. So with that being said, let's get to the questions. How do I pay my employees? So my employees are paid by direct deposit every two weeks. They are not 1099. I was asked that question. They do receive a W-2 at the end of the year. In fact, we just handed out our W-2s a couple of weeks ago. I use a payroll company called Gusto and it coincides with the ProCare app that the parents use and that the staff use to check in. Like that's how they use like for their time card to check in and out each day. So then those hours I simply just transfer over to Gusto and it handles all of it. So with that Gusto app, the employees are the ones who put all their banking information in. I do not see any of that. They do all of their like taxes through that and it's simply just a payroll tool that I use. Now, as far as any kind of benefits that I offer the employees, this is interesting. Okay, so I give each employee two weeks vacation after one year. After 90 days, they get three personal days that they can use. I do not offer health benefits at this time. Like I said, I only have a staff of like 10 to 12 usually at one point. So in most of our staff, they have their own health insurance, maybe down the line if I had possibly like 20 employees, let's say, I would look into offering that, but I'm sure the cost would be so expensive with such a small amount of people that I haven't even looked into it, to be honest. At the beginning, when I first opened, I was offering free daycare to all my employees. And then at one point I had three or four babies in the baby room and my baby room was $250 a week. And so you can imagine, <laughs> I was losing like a thousand dollars a week. So I then went to half off daycare for any employee that had a child 18 months and under, and then free daycare for any child 18 months and older. I have since then starting this, like the new year, I have two families or two employees grandfathered in with their children. Any new employee that comes on will pay half daycare cost no matter what the age is for the employee simply i'm just losing too much money to be honest and you know with me just being the sole owner i don't have a partner i don't have business investors when i really sat down and thought about it and as much as i always wanted to give my staff free daycare financially it's a lot of money to give away so we are now going to be like i said implementing half price no matter what age um, what else can I say about the employees? We do have a dress code now. At the beginning, I did not. I have since ordered shirts and our primary colors, my logo colors, um, navy, red, and yellow. And our logo is just printed on the side and they can wear that with jeans. And then on Fridays, our dress down days. The cost for the t-shirts were no cost to my employees. I paid for three t-shirts for each employee. I do offer paid trainings. So our state requires like a six hour initial training that is paid. And then I do cover if they are not like CPR, first aid, communicable, all of those trainings are paid for by me. And I do cover their background check upon employment. They are responsible for their physical. Now, if an employee quits within the three months, I will deduct all of those things back out. So just food for thought. <laughs> Have I had employees quit? So I'll, I've been open since last April. In July, I had an employee resign. Um, yeah, they resigned. <laughs> and then a couple of months ago, I had an employee resign. Other than that, I have personally let everyone else go that has left my center. And mainly because of attendance, honestly. Um, attendance is a huge thing. We started offering like a bonus. If you do not call off for the entire month, at the end of the month, your name will be put in a raffle and you'll win like a cash prize, a gift card, something. We change it up each month because I'm going to be honest, we had an attendance problem for a while. 
So that's definitely something to get used to because it was always just me and Holly. And Holly never called off when we had the home daycare. <laughs> Clearly, I never called off. So when you have 10, 11, 12 employees, when one or two or three people call off, it can be a total nightmare. So knock on wood, lately it's been pretty good. I'm gonna give them props for that. It's definitely been a lot better. My staff does work for tens for the most part. Holly, who is my cook, she works five eighths. My director works five days a week. And then I have one teacher who has two little ones and it's just too tough for her to work the 10 hour days. So she works five eighths. Otherwise we do four tens, which works out perfect. The girls seem to like it. They pretty much get their day off. They kind of all have like set days off. And so that works out really good. I was also asked, how often am I at the center? Am I there every day? The answer is no. At the beginning, I was. At the beginning, I was there open to close for many, many months. I did all of the tours, and then I've kind of stepped back over the past couple of months, knowing that right now I'm not even in the state. <laughs> if you saw my last video, the tour video, I had mentioned that I was going to be out of town for about five or six weeks for the birth of my granddaughter, and so currently, I am visiting with my daughter and her family. So when I'm not here, <laughs> I'm at the center a couple of days a week. My director one day a week comes in at noon, so I open that day. And then a couple other days, like throughout the week, I'll be there, I'm not there all day. I just kind of, you know, check on things, see if they need anything ordered. Um, and just, you know, show my face, show my presence. I am there almost every weekend though you know, cleaning, <laughs> my OCD kicks in, I'm, you know, bringing supplies. Usually that's when I bring, I purchase like all the bulk stuff. I go to Sam's Club. My sister does all of like the grocery ordering. So usually on the weekends then I'll deliver like diapers because we do supply diapers and wipes for all the children in pull-ups. So usually I have multiple boxes I have to bring in and it's just too much during the week with you know, the center up and running and the teachers and the kids. So I like to come in on the weekends when there's no one there. <laughs> and I'll usually spend a good chunk of like one day each weekend there at the center. But even though like I'm not in the state right now, I probably speak to my director more than when I am in the state. Um, I'm always checking that ProCare app. I'm answering emails, um, getting a hold of any parents if I need to be. So I am very active in the center. Another question I have is, will you in the future open another center? Probably not. And the reason being staffing. I don't know what's going on and I don't know why people don't have to work. <laughs> I'm just gonna be real, you guys. This has kind of been a nightmare about staffing. Now, this center is in a small town and we are growing crazy with kids to the point where I've had to halt a couple of times enrolling because to catch up with staff. Um, so yeah, I don't think I would open another center. I'm glad that I have this center, but I don't think in the future I would open another center. Um, you, know, you never know though, but right now that's my answer is probably not. The next question I have is what state programs do I participate in? So I do not participate in the food program. When I had the home daycare, you were allotted like a certain amount. I think it was like each day per child and it was a great tax write-off. So I definitely did that. I didn't participate in the food program, but for my taxes, since I was a self-employed um, provider, I could write off a certain dollar amount. So that I appreciated. For the center though, I do not participate in like the state's food program. It's like pennies on the meal. I don't even know if it's like a quarter a meal per kid. And so to me, to have to go through all the regulations, the inspections, to have another person come in, do a separate license, just to have, you know, that micromanagement of the state down your back with food, to me, it's not worth it. So I, I probably will never do the food program. I participate, and I had mentioned this in the day in the life of a daycare owner. Um, we are, we do participate in like, the state voucher program. So it's for lower income families that meet a certain guideline. The state picks up their daycare tab. Now we do not get full payment for that. So say if my daycare rate is 250 a week, we'll get maybe 
like 210, 220, I want to say. And we only get paid for the days that the children are here. So the parents are allotted a certain amount of time, um, depending on their work schedule or how many hours a week they can use in daycare. So I want to say if they use more than like 30 hours a week in daycare, like we get, that's considered like full time for the state. Um, the other program that we participate in is a kinship program, and that's usually dealing with like foster families. And we have two different programs we are in right now. It's the same program, but like two different counties. So the one county, they pay us regardless. They pay us our full rate if the children are there or not, because that's how our tuition goes. You know, our families pay on Fridays for the following week. So if they're five days a week, they pay for five days. If they only came one day, they still paid for those five days. It's for your spot, not per attendance. So that kinship program honors that. The other county does not. And we just found out recently that they will only pay us for the days that the child is there. So the child was out for two weeks in December. We just found out that we are not getting paid for those two weeks. And they do not pay us our full daily rate. They pay us like $50 less a week. So I've made the executive decision to end both of those programs. Um, the first one, even though they give us our rate, it literally, it's like a two month lag on when we get paid or like a two month delay. Um, and again, we're supplying food, diapers, wipes all up front and I'm waiting at least two months to get reimbursed and I'm just not willing to do that anymore. And then the second program, obviously because A, we're not even getting full pay and now we find out they're not gonna pay us if the child's not there. So as much as I appreciate families doing fostering I feel like why should I take a hit though financially because of that situation? You know, I am a for-profit organization. Again, I don't have investors. This is money coming out of my pocket then and I'm taking the financial hit for it. So I decided at the end of this month, both of those programs, they're ending. If the families wish to stay on and pay out of pocket, that is great. But otherwise it's been more of a headache than not. And so, and I do believe most centers, it's tough for them to find centers that'll take this, and now I know why. Again, learning curve, this is my first year opening, you know, and running an actual commercial center. I didn't have these kind of, I didn't work with these kind of programs in the home daycare. Everyone was self-pay, it was a private organization. So, but that is that. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any other state programs that we are in. We did receive our first star rating for our state, so that's why we're eligible to receive public funding. Last month, we actually received a small grant from the state um, just for being like a new and upcoming center, and they had a little bit of extra money, so we had a lady stop by our center and present us with a check. So that was amazing and awesome and very grateful for that. So I was able to get some new gym toys and stuff, so always, always appreciative. So we are looking at grants in the future. Our state has a HERO Act grant. So the girls, if they have been employed since, I think September through December or January, they're eligible for a $3,000 like bonus. And if they, they had to work full time, or if you came on after November and worked till February, they're eligible for a $1,500. Um, Heroes Act bonus. So I think those will be paid out by the state in like March or April. So that's a really great incentive too. So it's a nice bonus for the girls. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about are expenses with owning a child care center. So obviously I have rent, I have my insurance, I have maintenance fees for the property, the outside of the property. So I am in a complex and so it goes by the size of your building. And I am the second largest building in this complex aside from the grocery store. And so I pay a monthly maintenance fee, which is pretty hefty. They do all our lawn care and they shovel, they lay salt down in the winter, but I don't have to worry about anything on the outside maintenance um, with the building. And then I pay, you have your, like your standard, you know, electric, gas, water, um, garbage, I have a security system I pay for, I have a fire alarm system I pay for, um, the internet I pay for and the telephone. I do have a storage unit because we have no storage in this building, so I pay that monthly. I do use Canva, so I have a Canva monthly expense and then I do use HP Insta Inc. 
so I have that monthly expense as well. So pretty much the staples, um, again, having a center versus owning your own home daycare is that you can write off a portion of those with the home daycare. I could write off, I think, 25% of all of that stuff as to where the center I cannot. So <laughs> keep that in mind as well. It's a couple of thousand dollars a month, you know, in these utility bills. And so it does add up. That's just utility bills, not rent and insurance and everything else. Like I mentioned before, I do supply diapers, I supply wipes. And I'm always asked, why do I do that? And the answer is simple, because I'm not chasing parents for either one of those. I did that at the home daycare, and I was not gonna do that with 70 or 80 kids. There's no way, <laughs> there's just no way. I would rather know that we are fully stocked. I don't have to argue with parents and why we went through so many diapers so fast and this and that, and it just eliminates all of that, which I love. I have like my monthly staples that I have to purchase, obviously toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning products, paper, you know, towels for the dispensers, hand sanitizers, and then I have like classroom supplies, paint, paper, I'm forever buying printer paper. <laughs> I love the HP and staying so much because I don't have to worry about ink at least. We go through a lot of laminated sheets, a lot of cardstock. We do, we, I would say it's probably a couple hundred dollars a month in like school supplies as far as that. I do try to buy things in bulk. I definitely will be hitting up the back to school sales this year because we are out of markers. And to purchase markers for two or three dollars for eight, when those school sales, they end up going down to 50 cents, sometimes a quarter, and I buy hundreds of them at a time then, I cannot wait for those sales to come back. I'm surprised, like we still have crayons. We're really good on crayons and actually glue. So, but it, the markers are the big item that I have run out of. We do breakfast, lunch, and two snacks. So the morning snack is always animal crackers or um, goldfish. I get those in bulk at Sam's Club. And then in the afternoon, we do um, rotate snacks. We have gone down to a rotating menu. So weeks one and three are the same, two and four are the same. It just makes it easier for ordering and for bulk ordering because we were doing a different menu every week. And we have had a lot of enrollments with milk allergies lately and dairy allergies. And so we've kind of had to trim down our menu and get rid of a lot of like the cheese and the dairy in our menu just so that no one has any kind of reactions or anything like that. Now, if a child does need like a special milk, like a soy milk or almond milk or something like that, the parents are responsible to bring that in. Just because we have, like I said, we probably have five or six kids right now in that situation. And so, and I do believe like those milks only last like a week after they're opened. So I'm, I'm not supplying that. The parents can bring that in as well. What is required for enrollment from the child? When families do decide to enroll in our program, we do have a registration fee, a one-time registration fee, and then they have to pay for one week's tuition up front. So we have a whole packet we give out when the child and their family tour. They have to have a physical in our state within 30 days. We have an emergency contact you know, forms, obviously. We have allergy forms, author authorized pickup forms. I do have a photo release form if they can be on social media or not. Um, we have a field trip form because even if we walk around the outside of our building, that's considered a field trip. So the parents have to sign that. We do have key fobs for our, um, to enter the building. So the parents sign off on those. I'm trying to think what else. If they're under 12 months, we have to have like a crib waiver for them to sign. And then we do like our diaper forms, like what size diapers are they? And I think that's pretty much it. We give them a handbook. They have to sign and acknowledge the handbook. And we've had a couple of incidents where I don't think they've read the handbook. You know, I mean, I don't know. Would I really read the handbook front to back? Maybe not. But with tuition. So our tuition is due on Friday, like I said, for the week, the following week. Um, they pay again for their spot, not for attendance. And it clearly states that in the handbook, which every parent has signed. We've had a couple of families who forget that they've signed that and we've gone round and round because when their child's absent, they don't want to pay. So now we have those highlighted and <laughs> like hung up in certain areas of the center to remind the parents that tuition is due regardless. And 
I mean, for the most part, most of my families, they know and they pay. Like I said, it's only been a couple of families that we've had this issue with. And luckily, I think we finally have resolved that issue. Okay, the next question is, do I offer before and after school programs? Am I going to be doing summer camp? I do not offer before and after school because our elementary here has like a key care program, you know, before and after, and it's $4 a day. I literally cannot compete with that. And I'm not gonna take kids before and after school for $20 a week. It's, <laughs> that's not even profitable. It doesn't make sense because I'd have to serve them an afternoon snack and breakfast. And even if they brought their own for $20 a week to have a staff member just for that program, it's not to me a good business decision. So I've never entertained it and I'm not going to. Like I said in our tour video, we are considering doing summer camp again this year, except we're limiting the ages five to eight. Last year it was five to 11, and the 11 year olds and the five year olds did not mix. It was kind of a nightmare, especially going on field trips. So this year, if we do do it, it'll be five to eight. I haven't made a 100% decision on that. I will probably by March, so that if I do do it, I can advertise it starting in March. Now we do offer traditional preschool two days a week. I think that comes to a conclusion in May. I will not be doing traditional preschool next year. So that is a separate class than our full day preschool program that we have right now. And simply, I just don't have the staff or the room for it to have those additional kids. Again, it's not a huge money maker. When I was first opening, I was trying to think of ways to make money to get people through the doors. And so that's where that program stemmed from. And I didn't really have interest in four-year-olds. It was all three-year-olds because I'm assuming four-year-olds already had found a place to go they probably went to the place they went to last year so i am going to offer my families you know you can partake in our full day program but i will not be doing half day preschool next year so our hours at the center are 6 30 to 6. we are closed all major holidays we are closed the day after thanksgiving i do believe either we're closed good friday or we close early maybe we close at like 4 p.m i'm not sure but we are closed all the other holidays we don't take like summers off. We don't take a week vacation at Christmas off. Our traditional preschool program does. They are, you know, they're gone for two weeks at Christmas time. They're gone for the week of Easter as well. And then, like I said, that program ends at the end of May. If I do do summer camp, that will start that first week of June and run through probably the middle of August. And that would be Monday through Friday you know, the hours that we're open for the daycare. Another topic I want to briefly discuss is inspections. So we just had our yearly um, licensing inspection a couple of weeks ago, and she was actually like three months early. <laughs> but I guess they have now changed in our state the time frame of those. I think like the fiscal year starting in July which it was never like that. It was always a year from when you opened. So we've had, I think, three or four inspections because you get one upon opening. Um, you get one within like the first 30 days of opening. And then they come back, I think, six months later. And then now we've had our next yearly rating. Some of the things that we've been dinged on are just so annoying because they're, they totally can be preventable. This last inspection, we got dinged on the one teacher and didn't complete the one training course. And so it, they have like the first 30 days to do that. And she completed one, but not the other one. So we got marked for that. They randomly pick out like student files. And one of the physicals, the doctor didn't mark that their immunizations were attached, even though their immunizations were attached. But since he didn't check that check box, <laughs> we got cited for that what else have we gotten cited for not at the beginning like i think this was like our first or second inspection a child wasn't signed in who was enrolled like who was there that day they weren't signed in in our book like they were signed in on the app we knew they were there but then the teachers also had to keep like a written log and the child wasn't signed in on that so we have gotten cited for that in the past else I'm trying to think what else oh we had a staff member whose physical when they went and had their physical done they had like a marking on their lip and so for some reason the doctor wrote that on the front page of the physical which was 
clearly a work physical. And so since that was marked, we got cited because the licensing agent said we should have sent that employee back to the doctors to have that re-examined. So again, just <laughs> some things I, I just can't. I mean, it's just silliness, but none of these were, you know, major marks against us. Um, I think we got like four points and you can have like 12 before you're even like put on probation. But it does drive me nuts because I feel like these are things that are just so silly, you know, but again, at least they're not moderate or high risk, you know, points against us. So that is it guys. I hope that I answered all of your questions. If not, if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. And I'll see you in my next video.